As we've been telling you on the show, 5G wireless technology is on the way, and it promises to bring faster download speeds and better connectivity for all of your devices. But is there more for this story? Many in the scientific community are sounding the alarm, saying we need to know more about what 5G is and what the increased electromagnetic radiation may be doing to our bodies. Now, according to our next guest, EMF exposure can lead to neurological effects, hormonal effects, and even lower fertility. Joining us now is a Dr. Martin Paul, Professor Emeritus of Biochemistry and Basic Medical Sciences at Washington State University. Thanks for joining us, Doctor. Delighted to be here. Okay, Dr. Paul, you anchored, uh, you authored a paper on the harms of electric magnetic fields of EMFs, which you then have used to lobby various government organizations, including the European Union. You have even called this latest 5G rollout insane. So we're going from a long way from having all of the electromagnetic fields from power lines in neighborhoods. Now we're talking about not only the, the one, two, three, four, but 5G rollout. Why do you feel so strongly that this is a health risk? Well, it's, first of all, you have to know that we know that the other EMFs that we're exposed to are already known to be health risks. And, uh, and basically that 5G, because of the frequency that's going to be used and because of the extraordinarily high pulsation levels that will be used uh, is uh, a much bigger threat to our health than the things that we already have, which are very substantial threats to our health. Well, when those other parts are coming, when they were rolling out 4G, when they were rolling out even 3G, did you have obviously these same concerns and what is the different level? I mean, you've, ex you've argued that the existing 2G, 3G, 4G radiation has already been scientifically linked with many forms of illnesses, including cancer. So do you feel even more, how much more of a danger do you feel like 5G is going to be? I think it's going to be massive. But you have to look, first of all, uh, we're not just talking about the intensity. We're talking about the frequency and the very high level of pulsations. There's a huge literature which shows that pulsed EMFs, EMFs that pulse up and down very rapidly, are in most cases much more biologically active than our non-pulsed EMFs. And, uh, and, and in general, every single wireless communication device communicates via pulsations. But the industry completely ignores this issue. And when you get up to 5G with the extraordinary high levels of pulsation, it's absolutely, it, it's absolutely essential that we not ignore it. And, and uh, the problem with, five, with, with, uh, with, um, with 5G is that they're planning to put out tens of millions of these antennae all over the place without doing one single biological safety test. And that's why I said I thought this was totally insane. Well, that's the question. If these technologies pose such a grave health risk as, as detailed in all of your research, then why do you think it's being promoted so aggressively, even just recently? Are you implying possibly that we, the consumers, are the guinea pigs since they haven't really done tests to see the effects in a smaller setting? Uh, absolutely. I mean, that's not an implication. It's a statement. We are, yes. Okay, so we are. So here's my question for you. What can we do, whether it be 5G or right now, what is, what is one of the things that you tell those that are closest to your family and friends that they can do to, if, is there anything they can do to help protect themselves from these radiation waves that we're already experiencing? Well, there are many things you can do to make things better. Uh, the problem is, of course, it gets harder and harder to do them as we introduce more devices and more dangerous devices. So you can, uh, you can put, you, you can put uh, shielding in your homes, for example. You can uh, take Wi-Fi out of your homes. You can um, even shield your body, although you know, people talk about tin hats and all that kind of stuff. But um, you know, that, there, there is shielding that can be at least somewhat useful. And, uh, but ba and basically, you can measure the intensities that you're exposed to and try to keep yourself in the, into lower intensity fields. The problem is that intensity as such is only one measure. And there are all these other things that are important, including, as I said before, the pulsations and, and the frequencies. Uh, they all have very important uh, um, roles here. Uh, and let me just say one other thing. It's very, very difficult right now to measure 5G 
because the meters that that uh, have been put out to, uh, to to measure them cost tens of thousands of dollars. You know, your ordinary meter won't measure them. Well, are there any companies like we've seen Apple has some reluctance and hesitation uh, with 5G technology? Do you see any other tech companies kind of actually listening to your study or listening to studies like it and heeding that and trying to at least work with and find a solution that will be acceptable amongst the community and, and make it a safer type of product? Uh, I, you know, I think that some countries have been responding better than the U.S. Uh, but no place is good. Mm -hmm. uh, I think some companies have been better than others, but none of them are good. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we have a long way to go. There, there have been, uh, by the way, patents taken out on devices that are, are apparently safer than the ones that we're using, but nobody's actually using those patents to produce uh, commercial products. So there, there are tremendous things that can be done, but we're simply not doing them. And we're not only not doing them, but we're running as fast as we can in exactly the wrong direction. Well, Dr. Paul, thank you for all of your research on it. I think this is a time the society has to decide, does the risk outweigh the benefit? Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.